Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to the 16th episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday, the 28th of January, 2020. This is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to sectors, relative strength, and our rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Campenaar, and I'm your host for today's show. With me, Zach and Rachel, as usual, for production and technology. If you want to participate, the chat box is open during the show, and we will monitor what's coming in. But email seems to be the preferred way of communicating for most of us, and that's fine, just don't be shy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. What will we be covering today? We will be going over some sectors, as we usually do. And I'm going to combine that with a segment that I've probably dubbed like where to hide in terms of like what's happening in the markets right now. People are looking for places to hide, and we'll see if the sector, sector rotation, and the work that we did on the beta of the various sectors can help us find some sectors um, that will protect us from a lot of downside. We'll have the break as usual, and then the second segment I will use to basically review the pair trading ideas that we did over the last few weeks um, and see if we can squeeze something new in based on seasonality. Let's get started with some charts. I'm going to bring up the performance chart for the asset classes. And my God, what a difference a week makes, I should say. Not a day makes, but like five days. And we'll see that the, um, the fixed income stuff has been good and outperforming. You can make this relative to the Vanguard Balanced Index Fund. So on the left are pretty much all the fixed income related ETFs. And on the right, and what's catching is that um, stocks, uh, SPY is not even the weakest sector or the weakest asset class. That was, again, I must say, commodities. Um, that blends in, fills in pretty good with the RRG for the various asset classes. Uh, stocks are still far on the right-hand side. They are, however, rolling over, so they're losing a little bit of relative, uh, relative momentum. Not yet in relative strength, but this is a weekly chart, and I'm going to switch this to a daily in a minute. On the weeklies, we see uh, commodities pushing further into the lagging quadrant, so that's a no-go for the time being. And the one that started to uh, curl up is government bonds, IEF. If you want to be very, very aggressive, you could play bonds against uh, uh, stocks because they are now starting to, to move in opposite directions. Although I think it's still uh, quite early. If we move this to the daily version of this chart, we'll see a little bit more granular. And we'll see that um, SPY is still static on the right-hand side, inside weakening, heading towards lagging. But the big moves are found in real estate, V and Q, which is pushing further into the leading quadrant. And again, commodities pushing deeper into lagging. Um, this is the complex of uh, fixed income stuff. And here is high yield, which is more correlated with equity. So you would expect that to move further into the lagging quadrant. If we do the same exercise for the sectors, then we'll have the sector returns relative to the S&P 500 here. And let's bring up the RRG of the sector ETFs, start on the weekly. Then we'll see that pretty much all the defensive stuff, utilities, real estate, staples, and then to a lesser extent, industrials and even technology uh, have been outperforming SPY over the last five days. And then the, the big underperforming here is, is energy. Uh, that's been a dog for a while now. And as you can see, the rotation here over the last five days curled up, curled up back down into lagging and started accelerating. So the energy sector is still very, very cautiously with that. Uh, and the good stuff, technology, believe it or not, still dragging on further into the leading quadrant. Just keep on trucking. Uh, and that one seems to look good even on the, on the daily chart. So if we look this on a daily time scale, We'll get the big moves from the defensive side, utilities here, real estate, and still technology far away on the right. And then we've got some, uh, some more defensive stuff curling back up inside, improving and moving towards leading. Um, people who have seen the show or watched it on YouTube uh, in some old episodes may have seen an episode where I introduced uh, using beta 
as a measure of risk or volatility for um, for sectors. And I what I did is I actually I updated that spreadsheet that I had uh, offered to you. It's still it's still an offer, so if you like it, then just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to share it with you. Uh, this is the the updated version uh, until today, and you can see that the <clears throat> 36 month beta um, is in this order with energy being the highest risk. So this is a measure of risk, a measure of volatility, not necessarily uh, uh, good or bad. So energy obviously is pretty bad now. Uh, and, and you'll see that because it's a high beta. So if the market drops, energy drops even faster. Um, and as you see the, the traditionally defensive stuff, utilities, real estate, staples on the bottom side. If we change that to 60 months, you'll see that the ranking order is not much different, um, but this is it. And what I did is I actually put those on a chart and I have to bring in a, um, uh, a sheet because I've, I've overlaid these beta values on an RRG. So you can actually see where the low and where the high betas are. And what you see right now is that the the low beta stuff is curling up. So this is a weekly RRG with a 60 month, five year beta, beta, sorry. Um, technology seems to be the outlier because it's still doing pretty strong. And now we've got healthcare, which is less volatile than the market, but still rolling over. And now we've got financials moving away, industry, industrials moving away, but we've got utilities, uh, at 0.17 with a long tail moving higher. We've got real estate with 0.57 moving higher. And we've got energy at 1.21 moving lower. And then we've got communication services at one, and pretty much exactly where it belongs, right to the center, because this is one. This is a beta of one. Spy against spy is a beta of one. And I did another one, uh, which is a similar RRG. But now it's a daily RRG and a 36 month beta. And here you can see very clearly the improvement of the low beta, the low risk sector. So where people are hiding right now seems to be the low risk area of the market, not surprisingly. Um, I am surprised by the strength of technology, I must say. I mean, at 1.12, that's a above average volatile sector, and it's still very strong on the RS ratio scale. Look at the very short tail, Pro means that not a lot has happened over the five, four trading days that we had. But look at utilities and real estate and staples. This is all kind of defensive stuff that started to push in a northeastern direction. So that indicates that the market is looking for shelter in these low, uh, low risk defensive sectors. How long that's gonna be? I have no idea, we'll just have to wait and see. Let's get back to some charts here, and I'm gonna bring my chart list back up here. Uh, this is SPY. As you can see, I mean, it's, it's a pretty drastic dip, but you know, in terms of trend, not, nothing much happened, and even against VBI and X, uh, stocks are still good. I mean, it's, they're rolling over a little bit, but you know, the long-term trend did not get damaged yet, I have to say. Let's do this very quickly. Um, we got materials, they never made it above their uh, all-time high and they're, they're, they dropped back. The relative strength is clearly very, very weak. Let's bring this in line with that RRG that you're watching. It makes it more readable. Um, here we got communication services. As I said, very close to the benchmark. The, the chart still looks good, and we're, we're already going a little bit higher. Relative strength is improving, although not much yet. Energy, this is the one that's actually now sending very negative signals, if, you, if I'm concerned. Um, we, were, we were trying to push against this overhead resistance. That never worked. And we are now actually breaking below that rising trend line, maybe maybe you know if you draw that a little bit lower it's still holding but the relative strength line is is sending very clear signals like stay away from this one financials still well above their uh overhead resistance now support 
And I'm a little bit skeptic about what's happening here. I mean, it depends on how you draw that trend line. If you angle it a little bit lower, it's holding up. If you angle it a little bit higher, it's breaking down. Relative strength is definitely losing strength. So the, the tail on the RRG, where is financials like here, is rotating uh, in a southwestern direction, and that's usually not good. So for the time being, financials are kind of dubious. Industrials, the relative strength is where the signal is coming from, and that is uh, a negative one. That's well inside uh, lagging and continuing further down. We go to technology, as I said, I'm pretty surprised by such a high beta sector to do so good. Um, the trend is still very well intact, no problem there. It could, I think this could drop to like 87.50, 90. Uh, if we put in a new low there, then that trend is fully intact and it's probably going to be a new buying opportunity. This relative strength line is super strong and the, um, the tail on the RRG is just heading in the right direction. So, I mean, the market is telling you that tech is still a pretty good sector. And then we've got staples. Uh, the relative strength is starting to curl up a little bit uh, in the lieu of the last few trading days. It's still in lagging. It's improving in relative momentum. The trend here is still good. So I'm gonna keep an eye on, on this staple sector uh, during the next couple of weeks, next couple of days, to see if this holds up and this relative strength starts to improve. Because we can assume that if this weakness in the market that we've been seeing over the last couple of days is continuing, that um, this, this rotation to defensives will continue. People usually do that. Uh, and that will keep this staple sector inside this channel and it will, it will continue to improve on relative strength and therefore on the tail on the RRG. Real estate seems to be breaking to new highs, which is pretty much a strong signal. And again, we have this, this line that, that I drawn here um, on, I think it was the 19th of, of January that I annotated this chart. And you see that it broke and it's now breaking back. So it's like struggling with this level, whether it's support or resistance. Looks like it's a little bit of a support area right now. With this going higher, relative strength could improve further and it could actually cause a rotation of, of uh, real estate further to improving and into leading as it's already done on the daily RRG that we just saw. Utilities here is the winner of this week, I think I should say. Uh, let's highlight it here. You see this, this curl up and this rapid acceleration over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and the, on the daily, we've seen it that it's actually exploding into the leading quadrant. Uh, and this is just a strong chart. There's nothing else to say about it. Utilities is now uh, definitely one of the sectors where you can hide if you wanna hide. And if we move to healthcare, um, that's sort of neutral, I think, because we are inside leading but rolling over, so it's losing some of its relative strength. Um, this relative strength line seems to be hitting some overhead resistance levels, and both RRG lines are starting to curl over. So while inside leading, we're starting to head down to weakening. I'm not sure um, if this can keep up the strong relative trend that we had over the past few weeks. And finally, here is the um, discretionary sector, which showed a nice break. The old resistance is now acting as support, so that is good. But the relative line here needs a lot of work before it starts to turn positive. We have some curling up here on the RRG lines. And if we have time towards the end, I will, I will show you an idea that I had uh, on this sector combined with healthcare because they are now moving in opposite directions. It's a bit of an early call, but it could be a good one. So um, discretionary continuing its rotation. It's not visible here really, but it could be. And the um, healthcare sector in opposite direction here where we see relative strength rolling over and RRG lines curling down in combination with quite a bit of downside towards the um, former resistance now support area. I'm looking at the clock, it's uh, 45, so we are going to a quick break.
And after that, we're going to review uh, a number of the pair trades that we set up over the last week. So I'll see you right after the break. All right, and we are back. What I actually did, you know that at the end of each show, I came up with a pair trade idea. And I've actually, uh, there's, there's no real, um, I didn't get any mails. Oh, Rachel, did we get any uh, comments in the chat box? Not yet. Everybody's super quiet. I know. Uh, no problem at all, no problem at all. I'm going to put this one here to the right. So these are the trades that we entered with the, the date and the current. This is yesterday's close. And I'm going to go over these trades and see whether we want to stick with them, what happened, and whether we want to get rid of them. So this one is AVGO and XOM, so that's in the in the energy space, and that trade was set up on the 19th of November, so that is here in this week. You saw that AVGO was pushing into leading while Exxon was curling back down. Well, that wasn't, it was the first one, and of course it wasn't the best one. It actually went against us uh, for quite some time because this is what happened. AVGO started to curl down and XOM as well, but AVGO even more. So this one was negative for quite a while. I'm going to put this on a sharp chart as well. So we got AVGO to XOM. And I'm going to make this my six months daily bar. And we actually, I, I know exactly where we entered this trade because it was on this bar, it was on the high of this bar. So you can see like straight from the bat, this one went down. I probably should have paid more attention to this because I usually want to take the bat off the table when like something happens in the, in the ratio chart. So in this case, it probably would have been like here. Luckily enough, we didn't do that. It curled back up and we're now actually doing pretty well. So this chart is now getting into a positive return. Um, and as long as we stick above that 475 for the ratio, I think we're cool on this, on this pair trade. The second one is XLV against XLB. Oh, XLV against, uh, sorry, I need to XLV comma XLB. There you go. And this one was entered on the 25th of November, which is right here. So healthcare moving that direction, materials moving the other direction. And that rotation pretty much continued until like two or three weeks ago with healthcare now losing a little bit of strength and materials still going the right direction. If we bring this one on the chart, that is XLV against XLB. And from the 25th of November, so that is right here. You see that that ratio moved in a very nice uptrend and that's still ongoing. And it's one of the better trades. So we're up 5.3% uh, as of yesterday's close. So that's pretty cool. We stick with that. And then obviously not everything goes very well. We have one pretty big bleeder, I have to say. So that was in the healthcare sector. And we did uh, the index with two stocks on the short side, IDXX and ZTS. And what happened here is that, um, let me put that on the 3rd of December, because that is right here in this week. You see why I did that, it's like healthcare going right up there and ZTS and IDXX moving left. Well, that didn't last very long because these stocks actually started to outperform their benchmark pretty rapidly, while the benchmark started to curl around against SPY. Uh, and that's causing a um, almost 10% loss for the time being. 
I'm not going to put that in there. Uh, this is this is a one that is very very tricky, which I'm not sure if I should hold it right now. That they are starting to curl back up, but um, money mo uh, money management wise, this should probably one that I should have uh, cut out earlier. And then we've got T row with P of G. That was the financials. So we got T row and P F G. And that went long on the 10th of December. That was this week here. Let's see how that goes. That one, T row dropped a little bit. So, so T row actually curled back up. So we, we moving in the right direction with T row now curling up or curling down and P of G moving up. Um, let me put that in. A regular chart, so T row versus PFG. And you see that this one was set up on the 10th of December. That was right here, again, right at the high. We lost, and now we broke above that, and now that trend is starting to take off. So you can see that these, these ideas are usually generated from weekly charts, so they, they take a little bit longer to mature. Um, so we had a little bit of a dip here. We held above this former resistance, now support area. We took out the previous high, and we're now on a new uptrend. So that is actually a trade that is now starting to, uh, to pay off. That's T row versus BFG. And then we have two, three more to go. Um, GS, our friends of Goldman Sachs versus BA. And this one was ended on the GS, comma, BA, comma. And this one was on the 17th of December. That is this week here. And you see what happened. Goldman just hooked back up while BA started really rapidly moving into the lagging quadrant. And this is what happened since. We saw a little bit of a hiccup for BA, but it's started to curl back into the lagging quadrant again. And Goldman is pretty static uh, against SPY. So this is actually a pretty good trade, which is now up 7.3% since the entry. Um, and if we put that on a ratio chart, then you will see that that is actually pretty nice because that happened on the 17th of December, that is right here. Took a couple of days before it really started to take off and it looks as if we put in a new low now, so we're actually continuing in this sort of channel that's now starting to get visible. Then we have the growth and value play, IVW and IVE, and this one, entered on Jan 7 so that's this one here so we got growth going there and I uh, value going the other way and that's still going strong so this this trade is now getting more mature uh, and probably will continue let me put it in here IVW versus IVE and we started that on 7th of January that is right here so that was that one is pretty good right off the bat after it came out of this consolidation air area broke this horizontal resistance and we're now moving higher and again so today so far is again a good day for this uh growth value uh play we're actually also above this cluster of highs that were formed in september so all in all this one is starting to work right now and then the final one that we have on record is KO versus WBA. Let me put it, let's start, we can do it like this here. This one is uh, one week old now. That is right here and it's, it's doing pretty good. We're pushing against this overhead resistance and if we put it on the RRG, then we have KO versus WB here. And that is actually starting to do pretty good. See the acceleration here of WBA while uh, Coca-Cola is starting to curl the other direction. So I'm going to stick with this for a little longer. And I believe that this trend will continue. Now, let me make 
very, very, very clear that these are not trading recommendations. These are not advice. I am not an RIA. I am not regulated by anyone. This is just a guy that looks at charts and tries to find some ideas and shares it with the audience. Just I have to say that. Um, other than that, I hope you like this. Uh, keep them coming. I've got quite a few emails of people uh, talking about these, um, these pair trades and how to put them on and, and where you look, how you enter and how, how, you, how you exit, uh, what are the triggers, etc. So I'll keep coming back to these, uh, to these ideas during the show. And please, if you have any questions or remarks, then by all means, let them come. Uh, they don't necessarily always have to be positive. I'm a big guy, I can, and I know that that you know you can't always be right, as long as you're just more right than and 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 bigger right than that you are wrong. Then all is good. I'm just the I'm I'm just keeping this sheet for my own reference uh, to make sure that I'm not you know uh, have too many bleeders basically. Uh, there's one in there that's the uh, that's the healthcare trade. So all in all, on average, they're up 2.45%. Um, since uh, November, it's uh, remember this. These are pair trades, so you got uh, this, this is a long and a short side, so you don't have uh, a super high market risk, so to say, that's going on. Anyway, there's uh, one thing that I'm gonna squeeze in the last two and a half minutes, and I'm gonna go back to my seasonality stuff that we've been playing with. Because right now, I think that I am seeing something uh, very, because we're approaching the month of February. And if you look at the uh, seasonal pattern for February, you will see that on that Feb column, most of the sectors are sort of 50-50, between 40-45 and 55. There are two exceptions. The one is healthcare, which has 30% of outperformance. But that means it is 70% of the time underperforming SPY. And on the other hand, we have discretionary, which on a seasonal basis outperforms SPY in 70% of the cases during the month of February. And I thought that was an interesting stat to look at. So basically, this is suggesting that discretionary will continue its improvement while healthcare will continue its deterioration. And if we put that back on the ROG that we'd be just looking at, let me just highlight these two. We got healthcare curling over, and we got discretionary curling up. As I said, it's an early call, but we got some backing from the, um, and I need to actually highlight this one here. We got some backing from the uh, seasonal pattern. So I'm going to keep an eye on this as a, as a pair trade idea. Let's put XLY versus XLV. Let's see how that looks. And that looks like a very nice bottoming formation. Um, it's, as I said, it's, a, it's an early one, but it could actually be a very cool one if that continuation of that rotation continues. And I'll probably keep some stops like right below here, this, um, this support level that we had. And it is almost time to say goodbye to you. Uh, where is my, uh, I need to get my last slide. There you go, guys. This was the 16th episode of Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching. And please don't be a stranger and stay in touch. The Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday, 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, you want to read more about sectors and RRGs, please go to the RRG blog on stockcharts.com, or even better, subscribe using the link below each article. Make sure you receive a nudge every time an article is posted. Thank you, and see you next week.